Use this little box for top end stuff. Bridge grain, pull these injectors or coal packs. I remember when that goes back, the bolts got to be in it because they won't come out past the firewall. Where's the front end? Laying on the roof. Oh. I could tell you I used a special tool to take this out, but in reality I just used a punch and a hammer. That's alright. It's good enough for this thing. Plastic guide rails run your day, do da, do da. Plastic guide rails should go away all the live long day. Come on. Don't get hung up on me now.
see if the screen's out of this one. Yeah. There's another common failure. Screen's all obliterated and gone through everything else and chewed it up. Always nice. Well, that high tech dual pattern camshaft. I believe this is an exhaust. Show significantly more wear on the low side. Not running it hard enough, I guess. Doesn't get up on the high cam very often, apparently. Huh? Well, right there is why old Brian gets to work on this thing. Good old plastic. Nice and weak right here too. You can. So there's just one little web bear holding stress concentration around the hole, just waiting for a cold day to start. Pull hard on the chain, poof, gone. Not sure if they put these screens in here thinking that they're going to keep material out or if they're in there to come apart and destroy stuff on their own. I kind of feel like if that's the case, they put it in there to purposely go through your stuff because. Honestly, this would be way more damaged than any dirt. <laughs> Eating that screen's harder on the bearings than the sludge would be. Stupid European double squares. Turn them into American hexes. Actually, surprising bit of wear on that bolt, really. Or that plastic rubs up against it. Well, after hours of fighting with that uh, exhaust bolt that's back in behind the hardware that I have no idea how you're supposed to get to with the bolt coming out of the turbine housing blocking it and the casting so close that you can't even get a regular wrench to go around it you get a thin wall one to go on there. Stupid 12 millimeter. I should have used one of these stars like I used everywhere else. But oh well. They got some kind of bastard uh, bolts in this cylinder head too. These T50s don't fit it. T55s don't fit it. Apparently it's some Audi special tool, but now I'm fixing to weld nuts on this thing if I can't get these out of here. I don't want to buy a special tool to take this apart. Then wind up not doing fixing it anyway. So I'm gonna try this and we'll see how it goes. Do the circle pattern. Funny on it coming, just like a turn and a half from the head bolts come loose. This thing ain't come loose in about a quarter turn.
I think these are one time use head bolts anyway, so. Kind of smell gasoline. Interesting. Well, I guess it didn't start, so probably has pumped cylinders full of gas. Once it lost compression. So I'll get my flashlight so I can see what all is hooked up. Get it off there. Yep, yeah, let's see if I can figure out how to get that loose. There's the camshafts. They look like used camshafts. I wouldn't say that they're awful by any means. They're not perfect either. They are used. 170,000 miles anyway. But there's the disaster. We're missing an intake valve head. I can't find it. I'm not sure where it went. The uh, bottom of the head chamber is taking some damage. Mike could take weld that up and remachine it, salvage it, or maybe just polish it up and leave it alone. I have to look and see what a head even costs. But it looks like every valve in this head has damage. So they'd probably all need work for sure. And probably, I don't know what, if it would knock the seats loose in this aluminum. Be bad, get it all back together and have a seat fall out of the head and trash it all over again. That's not the valve out of it. You can see down in there where the intakes have tagged. And the exhaust. Guess when you get that much slack in the chain with that adjuster gone, they can just bounce around and go wherever they want. But you can see the three marks in that piston where the valve face crashed into it. But I don't know where the valve face is. I can't find it. I have to go back and watch the video and see if I can find where it went. Surely it was in there. So I gotta do some pricing and figuring on this deal. See if it's even worth fixing or what to do here. If it's just slap a head on it, put it back together, call it a day. I don't, the pistons don't show any damage around the outside where the ring lands are, so I don't think it would pinch a ring. So it probably would be as good as it was. And it was running fine until it wasn't. So might would keep it going. I'd like to know if you could put a 1.9 diesel or a two liter VW diesel in this thing, but I'd say the computer would have a major fit. Even though I think in Europe they did build these cars as diesel, so Maybe that configuration exists somewhere, and maybe it could be done. Be interesting to know if any of my subscribers are familiar with that and can chime in. Certainly shoot me an email or let me know. Might not be out of the question. Be nice to have this thing get 40 mile a gallon instead of, it gets in the mid 20s, I think. Best I recall, it's been over a year, but I'm a slacker. Uh, that's some dirt there, but I got all that in, taken it apart. That wasn't actually in the oil system. See where it all fell there. Anyway, well, I'd like to be able to say that uh, took this apart and it's going to be a minor fix, but clearly that's not the case. Uh, we got some pretty substantial damage here, but eh, could be salvage. It is a used motor after all, and a used car, so. I wouldn't spend a lot of money on it and I definitely wouldn't spend a lot of money to put back in it what's in it because uh, I feel like it's just it would just fail again this is just so poorly built and designed I've thought about if you make these rails out of aluminum and put some kind of plastic strip on them 
for the chains to wear on if that would uh, be a better solution plastic is not good in an engine it's just destined for destruction between the heat and the oil and time it's about guaranteed sooner or later it's going to give up or some manufacturers don't care because by the time later happens it's out of warranty and ain't their problem this happens to be the poor sap that's still got a hold of it so in this case it's me thanks for watching thanks for subscribing i'll catch y'all later